Okay. Let's we'll start us off in five, four, three, two. Hello again and welcome to the seventh episode of the BadgerBlitz.com podcast. My name is John Veldheis, a staff writer for BadgerBlitz.com, and I'm joined today by our publisher, John McNamara, our other staff writer, John Gorman, and we're pleased to welcome another uh, Wisconsin committed prospect today in uh, offensive lineman Jaden Galt from Monona Grove, Wisconsin. Jaden, how are you doing today? Good, how about you? I'm doing great. I don't know about how the rest of the guys are doing, so we're not going to keep you too long. So usually whenever uh, prospects like you come onto the show, we uh, solicit some questions from our premium message board, the Badger's Den, which you can have access to when you uh, give uh, BadgerBlitz.com the... Or, when you subscribe or give us a, a sign up for the free trial. So I believe, John Gorman, you have uh, the questions that our subscribers have submitted for uh, Jaden. So why don't you uh, go ahead and fire away? Sure, indeed I do. Uh, we got quite a few this week, actually. You're, you're a popular guy. Uh, so up first is Bucky Nation. Uh, he wants you to talk a little bit about the Monona Grove coaching and what makes it special enough uh, to produce both you and Gabe Karimi in the past few years. Yeah, I mean, with Coach Sassy being the program, I mean, he's coaching. He's been coaching over 25 years. So, I mean, he knows what he's doing, obviously. But uh, him and uh, Coach Shooter, the offensive line coach, and then we got a lot of guys that kind of help out, obviously. But uh, they just put a tremendous amount of effort in what they do and just take pride in coaching. And, I mean, we have a great uh, conditioning program, too, and weightlifting program that we do over the summertime and then the wintertime as well. So, I mean, really has improved guys' conditioning and uh, strength levels. So, I mean, that's helped a lot, too. Okay, cool. Um, and next, Going Glass actually has a few questions for you. Uh, the first one is, is if there's anyone you are currently recruiting in the 2014 class. Yeah, I mean, me and George have been kind of working on uh, Joe a little bit. Uh, I mean, today I went and visited Wisconsin, so uh, Coach Woods has a couple of guys that he wants me to work on. He's going to send me a message. But uh, right now, mainly Joe Mixon. Okay. Um, he also wanted to know if you've been a Badger fan your whole life. Yeah, I have. I mean, growing up, I've gone to Badger games. I remember uh, going with my dad one time. We were watching Joe Thomas, and I just fell in love with his game, and just it's always been a Badger fan. Okay, and finally, and probably most importantly, can you beat George Panos in an arm <laughs> wrestling match? Yeah, I think I could. I don't know. I mean, we're both strong guys, so we'll have to probably battle out one time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Uh, next one from Badger Backer. Uh, he wanted to know exactly what the offensive line um, is projecting you as. Or sorry, what the coaching staff is projecting you on the offensive line. Uh, I mean, Coach Woods wants me to start me uh, uh, at left tackle, and then basically anyone that has like the ability to play tackle in his eyes, he's gonna start there. And then there's guys better than me at uh, left tackle, then it goes to right tackle, then to guard, and then center. So basically, it starts all like that usually. Uh huh. Um, and then CC Manhattan wants to know what your current measurables are. Okay, uh, six six and a half uh, height wise, then three hundred pounds right now. Okay, three hundred on the button. Yep. Cool. Uh, Hedizel was wondering uh, if Wisconsin wasn't an option for you, what other schools uh, would have been standing out in your recruitment? Uh, yeah. I mean, at first with uh before uh, Brett Bielma left, it was I believe Wisconsin offered first, and then Nebraska was second, and then Michigan State. So I mean. I went to Michigan State and visited there, and uh, I really enjoyed that place. Uh, they were probably my number two when I committed to Wisconsin, but uh, oh, Michigan State stood out a lot, and then uh, recently I'd probably say Oregon and uh, Ohio State. As okay. So. And last but not least, uh, Sully Bear was wondering what could uh, sorry what Coach Woods has said about the type of offensive line play mm -hmm. and the style of offensive line that he wants to have at Wisconsin. Uh, I mean, just being physical and nasty, basically. Uh, he's well about Coach Woods that he's really straight up. I mean, he's not, he just tells you what it is, so that's really cool. Uh, I mean, just really, it's going to be the same old tradition that we've had, and just being physical. Okay, cool. That's all I've got for you. All right. And then, uh, Jaden, for, for the new subscribers or guys that are just kind of tuning into recruiting, um, take us through your recruitment. It, it happened a while ago when you committed. Yeah. I know you picked up the offer from from the old coaching staff and you committed. Just kind of take us through that process of how, um, you know, you became a part of Wisconsin's 2014 class. Yeah, I mean, uh, just starting out with the camp, I went there. I knew I was going to have a chance to get an offer if I just kind of show them what I had. So I had a decent camp, and then obviously Coach Bielma offered me. So, I mean, I was really jacked about that and excited. I mean, being your dream school, obviously it's going to be a big offer. And then uh, 
really it was just kind of a whirlwind after that with Nebraska offering the next day and then Michigan State just kind of picked up after that. But, uh, I don't know, when in August I was even planning on committing, to be honest with you, but uh, I met with Coach Herbert and all the strength guys and just kind of felt really comfortable that day and knew it was time to commit, so that was when I committed to them. How difficult was the transition from you from, from one coaching staff to the next? You know, obviously you still remain solid, but – uh, right. I would imagine that caught you off guard, and how difficult was that transition process for you? Yeah, I mean, at first it was kind of frustrating not being in touch with the new staff at first, but, I mean, I had to understand that they had to work on the 2013 commits, which made sense, and then uh, once I was able to sit down with those new coaches and get to meet them in person, I was just I felt really comfortable and knew it was the right place still. And what's your message to other coaching staffs? Um, because they certainly haven't stopped extending offers. I know a lot of schools came in, uh, you know, even after you reaffirmed your commitment. But you know, what's your stance on that, and how do you deal with coaching staffs continuing to uh, to recruit you, essentially? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to hear all like the white waters in those schools that kind of will jump on, I guess. But uh, you know, like with Arkansas, uh, Oregon, all those guys. I mean, I also talk to them and all that stuff. Just kind of have my options open. Just if something were to happen, that would be. I mean, whether it's like Getting, uh, being able to be accepted to Wisconsin, which obviously that's has its own being such a great school that it is. I mean, that can be tough at times. So I mean, uh, I mean, I, I keep my options open, but I mean, I'm still committed. So. Okay. And then you know you've mentioned the tradition of the Wisconsin offensive line um, with Coach Woods now in place. You know, what are your first kind of impressions of him, and how do you think that group is going to kind of you know move forward together? Yeah, I mean, I think he's done a great job so far just watching him during uh, some of the practices that we were able to see in the spring. And then uh, my mom actually knows, she works with Ryan Groy's mom, and he's really liked her a lot. And I've I've heard uh, I've heard nothing, like, neg no negatives about Coach Woods at all, but Ryan Groy really likes the coach. And just being able to know that those guys really have that faith in him. And then for, for someone who's been committed for so long, it's kind of a delicate process when you begin to recruit other recruits. <laughs> How do you go about doing that and not trying to, uh, you know, overstep your bounds or over push Wisconsin? I guess how do you how do you try to, re you know, do do your job as a as a fellow recruit trying to get other guys to Wisconsin? Yeah, I mean, I, I like to recruit in person, to be honest with you. Just like whether it's on a visit or if it's at a game. I mean, I talk, started talking with Brian, Allen, uh, and Jamarco and those guys. A lot of the core six guys kind of at one game and then just kind of grew that relationship. And I mean, you can't be like I don't know. I've never really liked to be. Like, when I was recruited, I guess, I didn't really like being recruited. Like, oh, this is the only place you got to go to. This is the main place. you got to be able to go here. But just kind of hearing out, like, the positives of, like, each school. But, I mean, I don't know. I just – I think from the offensive line standpoint, I mean, if you're an old lineman, I don't see why you would want to commit anywhere else in Wisconsin. I mean, there's a video today that we watched, and it just had, like, all the first-round draft picks. It kind of gave me chills. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how you can commit here if you're an offensive lineman at least. So, were you the only guest on campus today? Was that just you? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see anyone else today. It was mainly just me, I think. Okay. And then just the last thing, are you nearing 100%? I know you were a little nicked up uh, heading into your senior season. Are you, are yeah. you nearing 100% now? Yeah, I actually had a knee scope uh, three weeks ago. I had about a piece about that big. They took out about three-fourths inches. Uh, they got out, and then I'm actually able to run and squat this week. So, I mean, I feel – I've never felt this great, to be honest with you, so I'm feeling – probably like 110 percent compared to before all right great well and, that, that's all i got for you jay unless there's some follow-ups here yeah right. Jaden, i just had a quick question when you were on campus today did you meet with uh, any of the new uh you know strength and conditioning personnel like evan simon who's going to be running that department yeah now? i met with coach simon a lot actually this is probably my fourth time meeting with him but i sat down with him and then he had ray ball come in too so it was nice to be able to talk with those guys and i mean they're they're really on the right path right now so i'm really excited about that did you notice any differences in personality or style between him and his uh, his predecessor? I mean, he's really he's always been about like having good flexibility in like prehab and then uh, post tab. So just really a lot of stretching and stuff, which is really good with flexibility in the hips and all that stuff for offensive linemen at least. That's what Ray Ball has been really working on. He I can notice that he's gotten a lot more bend. So. Mm -hmm. And then, it, it, did they mention anything in particular that they would like you to improve on uh, during your, you know, your your final season of high school football before you would get onto campus? Yeah, I actually asked that question today. So I mean, just Ray Ball kind of mentioned just being able to have your steps down and always. I mean, you can get away with a lot of stuff at like at high school level, obviously if you're six six and a half and three hundred pounds. But uh, just 
being able to have like good bend and just having steps, I'm really gonna work on just making sure my fundamentals are solid and then just really I mean it takes ten thousand reps at a time to find like make something hundred percent and work good. So it's really working on that and then flexibility is a big thing I wanna start working on too. Mm -hmm. And then did you get to see the new weight room or the new weight room, like the facilities and all yeah, that stuff? Yeah, I was able to, me and George were the first ones to kind of see that. We went uh, basically about a week after it opened up, but uh, yeah, it's really come a long way. I mean, it looks awesome. Okay. Yeah, so unless uh, the any of the other Johns have some follow-up questions, I think we can uh, let, you let you go, Jaden. So uh, sure. thanks again for joining the show, and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch. And uh, again, thanks again for uh, coming on the podcast and answering some questions for yeah, us. Yeah, definitely, anytime. Thanks, right. Jaden. Thanks, Jaden. Thanks. All right, that was Jaden Gall. I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I, I love being able to bring these guys on. You know, it, it, I just feel like we we get such a better, you know, interview with these guys than, you know, maybe cold calling them. And, you know, I feel like this way we can we can get a better relationship with these guys that are uh, at least committed to the Badgers. And hopefully we can uh, keep this thing going and get some more guys on. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go for it. Jaden's always been real helpful throughout the process and, um, you know, I, I think with all those 2014 kids that were committed already, him and George Panos, uh, you know, that was a... Well, so, uh, you know, another thing, Wisconsin's fortunate to have a, a lot of good in-state players in this 2014 class, obviously, with Jaden... Got booted as well. Okay. Let's uh, give Gorman a minute. I think we should. Uh, I don't think we'll have lost any of that beforehand because the broadcast is still going. So. You think we could just like cut this part out here? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Because I didn't have to start up the broadcast again, so I think that's at least a good thing. I don't know. Maybe Gorman's having. Oh, Gorman needs another invite back in. Okay. At first, I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't really sure what what Jaden meant uh, about you know talking with other schools, but I suppose it's probably not too big of a, or that's not too much different than what anybody else does. I mean, you probably just you never know what's going to happen with the uh, you know the grades or anything like that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I know Oregon was on him, and then Ohio State came in with an offer. Oklahoma was at the school and stuff. So I mean, he was pretty heavily recruited right after. Yeah. Okay, well, let's give... Um... Sorry about that. My internet dropped. Oh, that's okay. We I don't think we lost any of this because the, the broadcast kept going, um, like, uh, when, I, when I logged back in, so I think we should still be fine. We can just edit this out. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So where, where were we? Was John... Um, yeah, I think I was talking... Or John was talking about... Uh, bringing some of these guys on and what it, what it means to, to get to talk to them, so we could probably just pick up from there. Okay. okay. Yeah, and it, to get these guys to come on the show, I, I think it's a, a huge benefit, um, you know, especially with these 2014 kids been committed for a while. I think, uh, you know, them coming on, uh, you know, a few months or even a year for some of these guys removed from their commitment. They have a lot of great insight. They've been around the program for a while still. So, um, you know, it's it's great to have these guests on. And, you know, we're fortunate to have a lot of in-state kids around. You know, George Panos we've had on, Jaden Galt now. And, you know, Craig Evans will work on, Connor Sheehy, a few other guys to get on the show. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to have these guys come on, provide a lot of insight for uh, for Wisconsin fans out there. I think it's a nice little perk for the Den members, too, to be uh, be able to ask a question. It's a good way to get the fans involved with the recruits in a, you know, in a little bit more of an organized manner. Sure, for sure. sure. Well, with uh, talking with uh, with Jaden, you know, we're, we're going to stay on the same page and talk a little bit about Wisconsin's offensive line for the 2013 season. You know, the uh, the Big Ten media days are coming up next week, which means the season can't be too far behind. So, so not only... Uh, 
is that a good segue into our next topic about the 2013 offensive line, but it also means that you should probably sign up for that 30-day uh, free trial if you want all the updates from uh, me and John when we go down to Chicago and then when uh, fall camp starts. But we'll get back to the 30-day free trial in a little bit. So I posted an article earlier in the week talking about some of the storylines that people should pay attention to, in you know, at least uh, in regards to the offensive line this year. So, you know, John Mack and John Gorman, I mean, what do you guys think people should pay attention to on the offensive line when uh, when fall camp opens in uh, in early August? Well, I think the biggest thing, um, you know, at least the storyline in the spring was uh, the lack of depth and, you know, how, how thin they were at the position and how Gary Anderson wanted to recruit. Um, you know, I think his magic number was 15 scholarship offensive linemen. Um, you know, they're... They're still pretty thin there. They they lost Jake Meter, another guy to uh, to an apparent back injury. It doesn't sound like he'll be with the team this fall. But uh, you know they got they got three of the incoming freshmen um, coming in right now with with Jack Keeler. He'll probably project as a tackle. Um, you know Vince Beagle's younger brother. Uh, he probably projects as another tackle as well. And then Matt Miller's probably more of an interior guy. Uh, of those three, I think Keeler has the best chance of, of playing right away, but, you know, that even might be difficult. But, um, you know, the biggest thing, because well, the starters really aren't solidified. I think, the you know, Ryan Groy will probably move into that left tackle slot. He played there towards the end of spring camp. Um, you know, there's question marks about Dan Volts. Can he step in and be the starting center? Um, Kyle Costin's coming back from, a, from an injury. I, I would imagine he's pro projected to start at right guard. You know, Rob Havenstein was a little nicked up, too, at right tackle. Um, you know, that left guard spot still appears to be pretty wide open. Dallas Llewellyn, you know, Zach Mathias is there. And, uh, you know, as Jaden talked about, Ray Ball is there as well. So um, the focal position might be that left guard spot. But um, by no means do I think any of these spots are really locked in 100% uh, concrete heading into this fall. Yeah, I mean, you, I think you touched on most of the points there. I just wanted to highlight, uh, again, that the left guard spot's definitely maybe the, the one with the most questions going into camp. Um, Matthias and Wallen will definitely be battling for it. And uh, I don't know, it'll be, it'll be definitely an interesting one to watch, um, especially considering all the transition with the new coaching um, and whatnot, uh, to see if any guys step up that maybe wouldn't have under the old staff. It's hard to say. Do you guys think that, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about how the Badgers, are, it's kind of surprising, but they, they do have a depth issue on the offensive line in, in terms of scholarship linemen. Is this something that uh, you guys think the Badgers could solve in one recruiting class, or is this going to be something that they're going to have to focus on over the next couple of years? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they should be able to do it if they can get five guys. Um, I just pulled up real quick the uh, the football scholarship roster that, that John set up. Um, on, on our site, and they're only losing Groy and Matthias after this year. So if they bring in um, five offensive linemen, that would put them right at 15, which is the number Gary Anderson has said he's wanted. And they've already got three, so I mean, it's definitely possible um, for them to add two more. Uh, maybe that's a nice transition into to talking about the recruiting, if, John, you want to touch on that? Yeah, you know, they, I think they could get there. I don't. It might take, you know you know, two solid classes or three solid classes. But, um, you know, d depending on transfers and stuff like that, I think this is a good group to, for them to bring in. You know, we just had Jaden Galt on the show. We've mentioned George Panos. Uh, Michael Dieter is a guy who uh, who earned an offer, who came to uh, Wisconsin summer camp and ended up committing. Um, I, I, they missed out on two of their guys right now um, in that 2014 class. Jarrell Broxton, uh, a junior college kid, is is heading to Baylor. And uh, by everything that we can gather, John Besney um, will be headed to, to a school in the Ivy League, most likely Yale. Um, we've been hearing about, you know, he visited Wisconsin. He picked up a, an offer from Wisconsin. So um, I still think they're going to try to get to five. I think Frank Ragnow, uh, a lineman from Minnesota, is certainly someone to keep an eye out. Um, had he visited earlier, had he been on campus, um, you know, sometime earlier in the year, I would, I would imagine he would have left with an offer. And Caleb McGarry, um, a prospect from Washington, is, is another guy to keep an eye on. He was actually in town uh, today, which is Thursday, uh, for an AU tournament. He, he wanted to get out to take an unofficial visit to Wisconsin, but per NCAA rules, he couldn't step foot on Wisconsin's campus for a visit while he was still participating in the tournament. 
Um, but he, you know, after talking with him today, I think he's someone who's pretty interested, even though there's quite a bit of distance between uh, the two parties right now, just uh, geographic-wise. Uh, I certainly think he's someone that Wisconsin's making a hard push for, and I feel the the, the feeling's mutual between both parties. I think there's a lot of interest between both parties there. Yeah, What's the right? one other name I wanted to add real quick, just throw out there, is Damian Mama, who's, you know, continued to blow up on the recruiting trail. He was said to be on... Uh, in, in Wisconsin last week, but obviously there's a bit of a, a flight mix-up, and he wasn't able to make it. Um, but he just put the Badgers in his top 13, and they're probably not a favorite in that top 13. But, you know, whenever you make a, pros a recruit's top group, um, there's hope for Wisconsin there, and, and he would definitely be a, a major, major get. Yeah, I uh, Mama was there for the, uh, the Rivals Challenge down in Chicago. He's another guy that I saw uh, – just a brick wall. He might have been the most impressive lineman there. Uh, he, he's big, you know, he's 6'6", well over 300 pounds. He's, he's got a little bit of bad weight to him. But once he gets in a strength and conditioning program in college, uh, I think he's just going to be an absolute animal. Uh, you know, he, he, once he trims off some of that bad weight, um, extremely, extremely impressive. Like I said before, probably the best lineman uh, that that they had down in Chicago, and you know that was the best of the best from across the country. So, uh, you know, like you mentioned, John Gorman, to have him, you know, have Wisconsin in that top 13, and you know, it was unfortunate for the staff that that those flight uh, his flight got postponed or canceled or whatever the situation was. But uh, you know, he'll be someone that they work hard to get uh, in town for an official visit this fall, I would imagine. What do you guys think about uh, Brendan Brosnan, the line, uh, lineman from Park Ridge, Illinois? I mean, he camped with the Badgers uh, at the end of the last month. Do you think he could be an option if, you know, if uh, Mama decides to uh, to trim the Badgers from his list, or if uh, if Ragnow decides that uh, maybe an offer was, a, you know, a potential offer, I suppose, came, uh, you know, too little, too late? I, I do. I, I think that he'll end up committing. Um, before Wisconsin's ready to really make a solid move with him. I think Vanderbilt's a school to watch out for uh, for him and his recruitment. Um, I don't think he had the best camp um, at Wisconsin. I, I certainly don't think he performed as well as he as he hoped or thought he would have. Um, he's someone that, you know, I know, when we were talking before, I thought he was a guy that could potentially earn an offer at camp. Um, you know, that obviously didn't happen. Uh, but, you know, he, he's a guy to keep on the radar, but I, I think he ends up committing before his senior year starts, and Wisconsin may want to see, you know, the first two or three or four games of his senior season before they're ready to move forward with him. Another in-state guy to, to, to keep an eye on is Corey Kadonko. Uh, his brother's a walk-on for Wisconsin. His film is, is just now posted on the site. Really impressive kid, a big, big tackle. Um, he's committed to Iowa State, but you know if Wisconsin's in a pinch and they're looking for for linemen a little bit later in the process, um, you know he's certainly someone that they might make a hard push for. Uh, you know right now I have nothing to believe that he's not 100% solid to Iowa State, but you know his brother's on the team, an in-state kid. If the situation's right and Wisconsin's still looking to add a tackle late in the process, he's certainly someone to keep an eye on, and you should take a look at his film that's up on the site right now. Yeah, and uh, as another option on this, uh, on the offensive line recruiting, I know, uh, John Mack, you and I had talked about a little before that, you know, it, it's hard to project, you know, just where people are going to end up uh, position-wise, but do you still think that um, Billy Hirschfeld commit, uh, as a, committed as a defensive end, but do you still think that he might be an option on the offensive line later in his career if he projects a certain way? I mean, I can take this if you want. I, I think... Um... I know there's some talk about him going to the offensive line, but I've spoken to him a few times now, and I've asked him this question, and he's always stated that his first preference is defense. So I think he'll definitely get every shot at defensive end, and I think he's a pretty good fit there. Um, and it, it would surprise me if he moved over, but, I mean, I wouldn't be totally shocked if in year two or year three or something he maybe gave it a go if he wasn't uh, progressing the way both he and the staff would have liked on the defensive side. Yeah, you know, he... He's a basketball guy, so you know they, they love to bring those basketball guys in and turn them into to tackles. So, um, but like John Gorman said, this is the position he wants to play defensive end. He'll start at defensive end to begin with, and if he you know if he has success, I would imagine he sticks there. But um, just because of his his athletic ability, um, he's a guy that you know 
could potentially be a left tackle for you because of his his footwork and his his ability and his strength and and all those things that he brings to the table. But he came to Wisconsin uh, because he was told he'll play defensive end, and that's that's certainly where I believe he'll start at. Yeah, and with uh, the, with the Badgers switching to that three four, I mean, finding people who can fit into that slot, you know, you, you need a, you need guys that can, that are a little bigger that can eat up space uh, uh, as a, a three four defensive end. So certainly, if he uh, if he proves that he can play there, I, I I would also be surprised if he moves. Uh, but you know, we we talk a lot about football on the show, but you know, we we do a lot of basketball coverage too. And uh, John McNamara, you've been in particular have been uh, working the basketball beat for us. So um, why don't you uh, talk to us a little bit about how some of these AU events have been going that you've been uh, attending? Yeah, you know, I've uh, I've rented out a little spot at Mequon uh, at Homestead High School where I've been camping out the last couple weeks. <laughs> You know, it's exciting now because it's the live evaluation period and the, the college coaches are, are able to get out there. Um, you know, I spent all of today at the at the NY2LA event, the Summer Jam. A lot of the top, you know, AAU teams from across the country. I mean, the gym was packed all day long, so it was a pretty exciting event. Uh, so today, which is Thursday, um, you know, Bo Ryan was there and Greg Gard was there. They started off the morning watching uh, 2015 forward Matt Helt. Um, he's a prospect that doesn't have an offer yet. Uh, he plays for the Wisconsin Playground Warriors. Um, he, he's going to be a guy that probably projects at a high Division One level with Wisconsin being on him. Indiana was another school when I talked to him. He said was pretty, uh, pretty involved in his recruitment. Uh, but the biggest thing with health is is how he's kind of developing physically. Um, you know, he looked a lot bigger when, than when you know when I was able to see him back in I believe December for his Nina team. Um, so if he keeps progressing physically, he's a pretty athletic kid, and he's certainly someone Wisconsin's going to keep a pretty g- close eye on, um, you know, f- through the remainder of his recruitment. Um, you know, after that game was over, this guard and uh, Bo Ryan bumped over. They watched Diamond Stone. Um, you know, we've talked about Stone at length. Uh, you know, he's he's a national prospect. He has an offer from Wisconsin. I would imagine he has offers. You know, by the time everything's said and done, from from just about every top program in the country, uh, you know, a lot of coaches were out in front trying to watch him. Buzz Williams was there. Um, you know, Tom Izzo was there as well watching him. So, he, you know, he's a national recruit, um, a guy that's got two state championships already at Whitefish Bay Dominican. Um, and then, you know, after those two games was, were over, uh, Guard and Bo Ryan went over to watch Cody Schwartz. Um, he's another in-state kid. He, he's kind of a tweener. You know, he, is he a three? Is he a four? You know, that might be the biggest question, but, you know, he's a guy that I really like. He, he shoots the ball really well for a guy who's about 6'7", 6'8". He can hit the three-pointer, and he's athletic. He can get up and down the court. He's a guy that I really wouldn't be surprised if Wisconsin uh, came out and offered uh, after evaluating him. They actually were able to see him twice today. They watched his morning game and another game uh, as well a little bit later in the evening when he played against another 2015 kid, Alex Ilya Kanan, uh from Minnesota. So, uh, you know, a really busy time for the staff, and I guess I got to jump one day before on Wednesday. Uh, one of the recent offers that came out was 2015 uh, point guard Jarvis Johnson from Minnesota. I had a, a chance to talk with him, and he was pretty excited about the offer. He seems like a guy who, who could really jump on the national scene in the next, you know, couple weeks or so. He plays for Howard Pauley, uh out in Minnesota. So, um, you know, from the people I've talked to, though, it might be tough to get him out of the state of Minnesota. He, he's pretty, pretty tight with his family, um, but you know, he's he's nowhere near making his, a decision. So, you know, with the live evaluation period, there's a whole lot going on, and we've been trying to uh, to get as many interviews and all the inside information out as possible over the last couple weeks or so. Yeah, and John, what does this mean? You know, obviously the you know the words live evaluation period and things like that. Uh, it, it can be kind of challenging to people who are a little bit new to the to the the recruiting scene. So, what what exactly is our coaches allowed to do during this period when uh, there are you know no games are going on and the season hasn't started? Sure. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Actually, I was sitting with a, another writer today, and he asked me the same thing. Um, basically, what they're able to do is evaluate. Um, they're, they're kept at a pretty far distance away from the recruits, so there's really no interaction that's allowed to go on. Um, so, you know, Bo Ryan can't go after Cody Schwartz's game and, and tell him all the great things about Wisconsin and how great of a game he played. Uh, there's no contact allowed to go on there 
at these tournaments. But um, really what, what happens at these tournaments, the, the coaches all sit together at one side of the gym and the spectators sit on a, another side of the gym and uh, they give the coaches a chance to evaluate these guys. Um, there's a, like I said before, it's a great opportunity for them to get out and uh, hit a bunch of guys all in one day. Uh, the MY2 LA event did a great job of getting a, a ton of prospects all in one location over the last three or four days. Um, but like you said, John, to, to really answer your question, what they really can do is just sit there and evaluate. They can't really go out and recruit these guys. Um, but a lot of times you'll see after these evaluations at these AAU tournaments that offers do trickle out, just like the one to Jarvis Johnson, um, which happened on Wednesday after Bo Ryan was able to watch that Howard Pauley squad uh, for three or four or five days or so. So um, not a whole lot of recruiting that they can do, but offers certainly come out during this time. For sure. And then there's a there's a, another AAU event up in Bloomington, a little close to where I'm at. Uh, so I'm going to head up there tomorrow and check out Henry Ellenson, a power forward from Rice Lake. So uh, I'll make sure to try and uh, uh, track him down after one of his games, and then we can uh, get an update from him as well. So... Unless uh, any of the other Johns have anything to add in, I think that'll pretty much wrap it up for this uh, seventh episode of our uh, BadgerBlitz.com podcast. Uh, don't forget that you can sign up today for a 30-day free trial to our website. You know, it gives you... I mean, in addition to, the, obviously, the free articles, which you can get right, you'll get uh, access to the premium message board, the Badger's Den, all of our premium recruiting content, text messages, uh, all sorts of stuff. And if you have questions for uh, any of the prospects that are going to be coming on the show, make sure to uh, sign up for that. So, John Mack, that, uh, how much longer is uh, this 30-day free trial going to run for? Uh, just th through the remainder of July. So there's, there's uh, what, 10 or 11 or 12 days left of uh, this promotion, and I'll get you right into fall camp, and you know that's certainly when things uh, heat up for us with fall camp. Certainly a fun time of the of the year for us. Right, and then don't forget that uh, you know football season. You know we we've been talking about recruiting and uh, all the other things that are going to come along with fall camp, but the the actual you know real actual uh, football is almost here. Uh, the Big Ten media days are going to. Let's see, they start up on Wednesday of next week, uh, so don't forget to keep checking BadgerBlitz.com for all the updates that uh, John McNamara and I will have from the from uh, the Big Ten Media Days in Chicago. And then if you're on Twitter, uh, you can follow our special podcast guest today, Jaden Galt, at, at 77, Jaden Galt 77. And then if you want, you can follow all of us too, because we're all on Twitter. I'm at John Veldheis, J O H N. V E L D H U I S. Our publisher, John McNamara, is at McNamara Rivals, and our other staff writer, John Gorman, is at J O N underscore, underscore Gorman. So that'll pretty much wrap it up for this week's podcast. We'll come back to you next week. Uh, not really sure when. We'll work around the Big Ten Media Days, but we hope to see you again next week. Thanks for listening.